Icons themselves consistently emphasize the virtues of saints. Saint Nicholas is by far the most popular saint in orthodoxy. Henry Maguire, the art historian, notes that while the written stories of Nicholas are often vivid and emotional, icons of his life are visually austere. Simon Metaphrastes, the 10th century author of the life of Nicholas, offers a dramatic rendition of the three generals threatened with execution by an envious governor. The story is rendered in iconic detail as spare, generic, and vague, showing neither the celebrating crowds nor the details of the city, but only three men, the executioner, who's sort of off to the side, and the saint. Likewise, the story of the imprisoned men, generals again, victims of envy, freed as a result of Nicholas's appearance and a dream to the Emperor Constantine is full of narrative drama. Yet in this icon here, the event shows only Nicholas and the Emperor. A particularly striking example of this iconographic austerity is the episode considering the poor man with three daughters forced to work as prostitutes in order to generate a dowry. The bishop's secret gener generosity to the poor man and his three unwed daughters is probably the most well-known and varied of his stories. Nicholas, seeking to hide his generosity, generosity, drops a bag of gold down a chimney, throws it through a window, or perhaps places it in a freshly laundered sock. The full story is not depicted in his icons. McGuire notes that despite the immense popularity of the icon and of the narrative, the famous Sinai icon, uh, which unfortunately I can't show you a detail of, shows only the poor man lying in grief in his bed his poverty indicated by the subtle detail of bare feet. The Novgorod icon here places the woman in bed and a despairing father at the window. The spare details of the icon allow for a broad appeal. Not all of us have three daughters for whom we must provide, but we can certainly empathize with lying in our bed in moments of despair and can be assured that Nicholas will pray for us whatever our specific circumstances. Icons depict the essential elements of a saint's life, and the accompanying narrative fills in the details. This interplay between visual icons and their narrative is especially important when we turn to the question of gender. Before doing so, however, I would like to note the nature of the narrative and the visual details in the stories surrounding Nicholas. They are descriptions of actions which embody particular virtues in unique circumstances. Nicholas embodies the virtue of compassion as he identifies and seeks to alleviate the suffering of women who must engage in sex work in order to survive, and a father who can only lay by and watch. He acts with generosity by giving money to this impoverished family. Nicholas practices the virtue of justice by interceding on behalf of those wrongly imprisoned. Imagine for a moment a saint who did not actively embody virtue. What if upon hearing of the three men unjustly accused, Nicholas had stood aside saying, ah, well, we must allow the justice system to take its course. Becoming fully human cannot be envisioned without virtuous acts because relationship is embodied in our actions towards one another. Virtue characterizes relationships with which respect and, when necessary, aid the other. And icons, by using spare details, do not dictate how we are to enact virtue. Instead, the saint issues an invitation to the beholder to practice virtue. By doing so, the saint invites the beholder to participate in the same transformative process that makes a saint a saint. <laughs> 